mind-boggling. I have always seen it piecemeal. The first day when they drove me out to the pad as part of my introduction, and I went up on the 180-foot level, and I looked down, and I looked up, I thought, you know, there ain't no way in the world this thing is going to get off the ground. Seven million pounds. How could it ever get off the ground? I took one look from the top of the pad, and this is the pad where Apollo 11 was going to lift off someday. It was just such a magnificent sight, and I'm sure only a few women have seen it. Early in the Saturn V program, the decision was made to go to an all-up testing. This was kind of pushed on us by Dr. Mueller from headquarters. He said, hell, you Germans, you're too slow. You just do one stage at a time. Fly it all. So rather than S1C only, S1C, S2, S1C, S2, S4B, right from the very beginning, fire them all. It was a nerve-wracking situation, you might say, to some extent. To think that your particular hardware, your area, might cause a catastrophic failure. And I just have to say, yes, it was a constant dread. You know, this was an extremely complex vehicle. When we started the countdown for the actual launch, I walked into this HOSC building, and I never come out for three days and three nights. Von Brown did a tour. Here's all his engineers asleep on the console. Von Brown said, let them sleep. I want them to be ready when the time comes. I was at a control console with my boss, and we got down to about T minus 30 seconds, and I thought, excuse me, I'll be right back. <laughs> I went down the stairs and out in front of the launch control center and stood there watching the launch. 12, 11, 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 5, 4, we have ignition. All engines are running. The reverberation was just pounding my chest. Imagine 350 horsepower cars, bumper to bumper, from the Atlantic coast to the Pacific coast, pressing that pedal to the metal. A seven and a half million pounds of thrust. That's a lot of juice. And when it did finally go, it was so frustratingly slow. It's not like a shuttle that leaps off, it's doing 100 miles an hour by the time it gets past the tower. You begin to wonder if it's even moving. It's just barely climbing. You watch it through staging. You think of all the hours that went into that, all the work, all the contemplation, the arguments, the changes, and it worked. I looked at the records. Looked just like I'd done them on my simulator. Nothing was wrong. First time it had ever flown. A lot of people don't realize that that was the same year as the fire that we went from the absolute lowest point in terms of program morale and spirit to launching that giant rocket. You know, we put an unmanned spacecraft on it. Literally the phoenix rising out of the fire. Once that was completed, I think an awful lot of people said, we can do this. And I think it set the stage for all the ones that followed. That for me was the most exciting launch because essentially we had arrived. Everything was progressing like it should be, and the future looked brighter than ever.